All right, we have uh, just one video question today, but we'll lead off with it. Uh, this is from Aaron. Hey, O'Clavin, Lord of Light, reflected off the shiny head. My name's Aaron, and I'm a pastor in the United Methodist Church. I'm in a season of sermon planning right now, and that made me wonder as I was thinking about different things to preach about, what do you believe the church needs to hear right now? Are there certain aspects of the gospel, of the Bible, of the kingdom of God, or the Christian worldview uh, that especially need to be lifted up uh, in our day currently? Uh, or to put it another way, what would the Claven preach? Y- you ought to know, too, that I have been known to once or twice sprinkle in a little claven goodness. Talked about playing in pain, things people do to avoid shame by uh, talking about themselves better than they really are. Uh, so I want to thank you for your wisdom. And as the founder of my movement, John Wesley would say, save the Claven. Thanks. <laughs> I, love, I love this question because I, it, there's more than one time uh, I have turned to my wife while we've been having coffee in the morning in bed and chatting and just said, what does it take to get people to preach the gospel? Just talk about what is in uh, the gospel. So I actually uh, like the question. I mean, I cannot tell you how often uh, I come, I've come home from church and, you know, uh, if my wife wasn't with me, she'll say, what did they talk about? And, they, and I'll say, ah, they said, be nice. You know, they said, be nice. It's either be nice or give us money. That's basically what I, I get from most sermons. And when they actually do interpret the gospel, it's almost always to interpret it away. It's almost always to uh, make us feel fine about the fact that, um, you know, we're not actually following the gospel, but we think it sounds, it sounds nice. What I want to know, what I want to know out of, out of the gospel is not so much theology. Theology is really interesting, but I want to know, I, I feel like God has got theology. I feel that's in his, I, you know, I don't, I don't care. I, it's not that I don't care who's saved and who's damned. I, I don't have any vote in that. I want to know how I'm supposed to live. I want to know why this philosophy is so radical that it changed the world. And, and the thing about it is Jesus never said, you will change the world. In fact, he said the opposite. He said, give your money to the poor, but the poor you will have always with you. He said, if you follow my philosophy, the world will hate you. The world will persecute you for my sake. So he never said, this is going to make the world a better place. What he said was it was going to give you eternal life. And not only was it going to give you eternal life, it was going to give you life in abundance. It was going to give you joy. He said, I want you to feel the joy that I feel. So what was it he saying? Because it can't be, it can't be that what he meant was go to the charity golf tournament. It can't be that what he meant was do charity work, all of which is great. You know, it's not that churches shouldn't uh, have charity work, but clearly this guy saw something that other people didn't see. Why was he saying, love your enemies? Are you really supposed to love your enemies? Can you still kill them if you love them? What does it mean? I, every time I hear the, the, what they call the lectionary in the Episcopal Church, the, where they read the actual passage that they're going to preach on, I think, wow, that is amazing that he said that, and I don't even know uh, how that applies to my life. And, and basically, I find the preachers will tell you, like, well, you know, what it really means is be nice and give the church money. Be nice, give the church money. Be nice, give, or, or uh, sometimes ascribe to some leftist, stupid social justice thing. And none of that is in the Gospels. I've read them a million times, and none of that is in there. What he is saying is genuinely radical. And I don't think that preachers step back enough and take a look at what it is about this, this uh, relationship with Jesus that changes your life. Because I've talked about it a lot. I mean, I, I've talked, when I go and talk to evangelicals, and I love evangelicals, they're some of the nicest people on earth. But, you know, and I say to them, gee, what does it mean, judge not, lest you be judged? And they say, well, it means don't judge hypocritically. I didn't need this God to come incarnate himself to tell me not to judge hypocritically. I think we all know we shouldn't judge hypocritically. That's not what it says. It says judge not. It says judge not. And I mean, I, this is this is really important stuff to me. Uh, it really matters. Love your enemies. What you know? What does that mean? Do I really do that? Uh, do I really turn the other cheek when somebody slaps me? Why is it that I feel really good when somebody says I never turn the other cheek? Why do I think ah, that's you know? What, what is he saying that's so radical? Why did they crucify the guy? They don't crucify you for going around saying don't forget to be at the you know charity golf tournament. It must have been something that he was saying that is transformative. I have found it transformative in my life. Uh, I'll talk about it. I'll write about it. I've re- talked about it here. I'm writing about it now. 
I think that uh, when you preach, that's what you should be talking about. What does this mean to the guy or girl in the pew that is going to be so radical that it really will increase your uh, life in abundance? It can't just mean give me money and it can't just mean, you know, like uh, you're off the hook in some way. Mm -hmm.